SpaceX is taking things one step back, but surely two steps forward. Yesterday, SpaceX was actually one step closer to the next flight of Starship when it lifted Ship 25 off the Super Heavy Booster 9 and lowered the upper stage to the ground. The whole process took less than an hour, starting at 8 a.m. and finishing up around 9 a.m. CDT. Bravo to the launch and catch tower. According to the announcement made by Kathy Luters, this is the final step of the mission. One crucial task is configuring the flight termination system. The team will once again meticulously inspect the vehicle right up until the moment of launch. She didn't declare SpaceX would be finished two weeks in advance, but instead, each engineer responsible for their respective areas will continue to review all of the issued tickets. They're constantly exploring any additional measures to maximize the success of both the vehicle and the mission. There's no time for rest. These dedicated individuals have been working tirelessly. Currently, everyone is eagerly anticipating the sight of the fully assembled vehicle at the launch pad. Earlier this week, SpaceX took a photo on Tuesday, and Looters often reminds her team that sometimes they just forget to pause and appreciate the incredible work they get to do each day. Looters also confirmed Starship's FAA second launch license could be around two to three weeks. Hopefully, Starship will be launched soon after. Meanwhile, Elon Musk tweeted yesterday, Moon soon, to respond to a SpaceX video test of a Raptor vacuum engine chilled to mimic conditions after a long coast period in space. Holy moly, this is truly gorgeous. Most notably, this is the engine tests for NASA's Artemis 3 moon lander. Cold engines are hot, I presume. SpaceX recently conducted a cold start demo of a Raptor vacuum engine for the NASA Artemis Starship HLS. This test fired pre-chilled engine hardware simulating in-space thermal conditions for landing on the moon, NASA announced on X.com. The Starship HLS will rely on two variants of SpaceX's Raptor engines, one designed for optimal performance in atmospheric pressure at sea level and another optimized for operation in the vacuum of space where there is no atmosphere. As reported on NASA's website, this crucial test took place last month to assess the vacuum-optimized Raptor's performance under extreme cold conditions, a scenario that can occur due to prolonged exposure to space. One unique challenge for Artemis missions distinct from low Earth orbit missions is that the landers may remain idle in space for an extended period, causing hardware temperatures to drop significantly below what they would experience on shorter missions closer to Earth. Actually, back in November of 2021, SpaceX achieved one of the initial testing milestones under its Artemis 3 contract by conducting an engine test. During this 281 second long test firing, the Raptor engine demonstrated its capability to execute a critical phase of lunar landing, the powered descent. This phase involves the Starship HLS leaving lunar orbit and initiating its descent to the moon's surface for landing. The test had two primary objectives, to showcase the Raptor engine's ability to modulate engine power over time, known as its throttle profile, and to ensure the engine could sustain operation for the entire duration of the powered descent. The successful outcome of this test bolstered NASA's confidence in SpaceX's engine development efforts. Testing critical technologies and hardware under simulated and actual flight conditions plays a pivotal role in advancing the development of Artemis moon landers. These tests offer early validation of systems required to safely transport astronauts to and from the lunar surface. Subsequent data reviews following these tests continually enhance NASA's confidence in the readiness of the U.S. industry for the upcoming mission. SpaceX's Raptor engines are slated for their next challenge during the company's second integrated flight test of the Starship and Super Heavy launch system. This implies that Starship is destined for success, which will not only benefit SpaceX but also holds significance for the entire U.S. space industry. Next up, SpaceX has scrubbed yesterday's planned Starlink launch and rescheduled it for today, Friday night at 11.38 p.m. EDT. Talk about Friday night lights. The company was keeping watch on the way weather in the booster recovery zone, where seas had been churned up by Hurricane Lee. Also, as of 7.45 p.m. EDT, the Falcon 9 was not upright at the launch pad. This is the company's 65th orbital mission of the year shortly after midnight tonight. For this Starlink 6-16 mission, the Falcon 9 rocket will head on a southeast trajectory out of Cape Canaveral's Space Launch Complex 40, or SLC-40, if all goes according to plan, deployment of 22 version 2 
two mini Starlink satellites will occur about an hour and five minutes after launch. The payload fairing containing the satellites was transported to the launch pad late Thursday afternoon. The first stage booster for this mission, tail number B-1078, has made four prior flights, including the Crew-6 mission in March. Crew Dragon Endeavor, which flew to the ISS on that mission, recently returned with its four-member crew. But in regards to the number of SpaceX Starlink launches to the sky, the People's Liberation Army has recently established new facilities to improve its space domain awareness capabilities, according to a report. The People's Liberation Army Strategic Support Force's new Base 37 is charged with boosting missile early warning capabilities and identifying, tracking, and analyzing foreign space objects, according to the report published by the China Aerospace Studies Institute on September 11th. China created the PLASSF in 2015 as the fifth branch of the PLA and charged it with integrating and overseeing areas such as space, cyber, and electronic warfare. While still not fully understood, its overarching goal is assessed to be intelligence gathering and providing strategic support to the PLA. Base 37 will improve the accuracy of the country's domestic space object catalog and likely has similarities to the U.S. Space Force's Delta II and Delta IV Space Domain Awareness Units. The new base will improve the PLA's ability to provide early warning of incoming ballistic missiles to joint forces, forces and track and identify space objects, location, maneuvers, and operating environment, according to the report. Base 37 combines new and existing facilities and likely has tracking stations and other installations in the provinces of Shanxi, Shandong, Xinjiang, Yunnan, Hangzhou, Qinghai, and Hubei. The municipalities of Beijing and Chongqing also host facilities. It may also be integrating data from space-based missile early warning satellites. A number of China's classified Tongshin Jishu Xi'an, or TJS, satellites in geostationary orbit are thought to be for early warning purposes. The report's initial analysis does not reveal Base 37 to have a role in operating on-orbit systems, such as satellites reported to be fleeing, imaging, and approaching U.S. satellites. It does not operate China's robotic arm-equipped movable satellites like Shijian-21, which towed a defunct satellite to a GEO graveyard orbit, and Shijian-17. The report, however, confirms it is active in integrating and analyzing related data. Based on a review of the base's technical reports and patents, the report suggests that the first priorities for the Base 37 have been to increase the accuracy of China's space object catalog, establish an internal collision early warning system, and improve identification and tracking of key perceived threats. China's space activities have expanded greatly in recent years, in turn demanding greater space domain awareness capabilities. The country conducted 14 orbital launch attempts in 2013, rising to 55 times in 2021, 64 times in 2022, and could reach 80 launches across 2023. During this time, China has constructed a modular crewed space station and plans to build a low-Earth orbit mega constellation. The report also notes that Chinese papers discussed perceived threats. These include highly maneuverable Starlink satellites, very low orbit space objects, and geosynchronous Earth orbit debris. The establishment of Base 37 has implications for the U.S. Opportunities include the possibility of greater cooperation in the realm of space domain awareness and more direct contact with regard to conjunction warnings. Notable challenges are possible greater Chinese distrust of U.S. on-orbit operations, such as activities in the GEO belt. The report also notes that China does not yet have an onboard space situational awareness system beyond small experimental systems. However, this will likely change in the coming years. And that's it for today, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.